This episode contains mature language and situations. Listener discretion is advised. You wake to the sound of a train. The clack, clack, clack of wheels. In the distance, is that the sound of birds in a forest? No. It's angels in a choir. Or is it demons from hell? It doesn't matter. You have no memory of how you got here. All you know is that you're lost and that now you belong to the Grey Rooms. Welcome back, roomies. As we push forward to our season finale, I'd like to thank you for your time. The staff of Grey Rooms Productions continues to shine the light in dark corners. Of course, the light attracts the monsters. So join us now as we enter the tunnel of the second half of our season narrative. The finale is on the other side. All aboard the Silver Express, hell awaits those who continue to lag behind. And we'd like to remind everyone that Grey Room production has expanded its reach. We now have access to Control Operator Jeff and the Ghost Signal podcast. True tales about haunting, sightings, the paranormal, and exorcisms from beyond the grave. Search for the Ghost Signal on Spreaker or your favorite podcatcher. Visit Jeff and the Ghost Signal at theghostsignalpodcast.com. So without further ado, please enjoy our compilation episode, part two of two. spoken to Beckett. He's on his way down. That's good to hear. Yes, I believe the warden is being seen to. Though from past experience, I imagine he'll need little more than a steady supply of mortal blood to heal his injuries. Will you be joining us, or... Ah... That's good to hear, even if the timing is a bit difficult today. Who attacked first? (laughs) Mammon never was much for patience, was he? All right, I'll pass along your apologies. I... Sir... Of course, if you think it wise. 
I'm not one to argue. But this is an internal matter. Do you really think... I understand. Of course. As you say, sir. Good luck with Lucifer. I'm sure the meeting will go... I'm sure the meeting will go very well. Come. Apologies. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, no, Admiral. You are not the source of my ire. <sighs> Actually, credit where it is due. I just got off the phone with the founder. Your disinformation campaign has borne fruit. Oh? Mammon has declared war on Levistus. The fourth layer marches on the fifth. And Beziol has gone to a council of the dukes down at the palace. So then everything is working out just as we'd hoped? Yes, just as we'd hoped. Actually, I wonder how much credit should go to you. And how much we owe to your shade companion. Is Samuel with us right now? He... Yes. He is. Why? Samuel, I do not know what you are or what you purport to be. But clearly you provide considerable aid to the Admiral here. And for the moment... Admiral Beckett and I are allies. We have some guests coming to the tower. They're on their way right now. If you'd be so kind as to keep your eyes open, look for any unusual actions they might take, it would be a service to both your father and myself. He says that he'll do just that. Excellent. Perhaps one day we'll be able to chat face to face. Perhaps. In the meantime, who are these guests you're expecting? Speak of the devil and he shall arrive. Or in this case, the angel. Come in. Sister dear, so good you could see us on short notice. And this must be Admiral Beckett. We've heard so much about you. It's a pleasure to meet you in person, finally. The pleasure is all mine, Basile. You're even more beautiful than the images in your dossier. Oh, I don't think so, dear. If I wore my true form in front of you, you'd go quite, quite mad. Can we get on with this? Time's wasting. Admiral, this snarky model is Moth. I don't believe you've had a chance to meet either. We have not. A pleasure, sir. Yeah, yeah, kid. I'm glad you're on board. This place needs all the perspective it can get. If this were any other time, I'd love to sit and share a cigar, maybe some brandy, chat about all the little things. But we have a bit of a situation here, don't we? Yes. Come in. Sit down. You'll hear about Bob's escape. <laughs> yes, we very much are. How did dear Woe manage to slip his bond, sister? We were all, and you'll pardon my language, we were all pretty fucking surprised to hear he'd managed to escape from the Grey Rose. Yeah, architect. Shouldn't that be... Impossible? It should have been impossible, yes. But as I'm sure you read in the letters I sent along, he had external assistance. Unexpected. Shocking. Who helped him? You said Todd? 
yes, and... And Samantha Winters, the previous guest of the rooms. I... forgive me, madam, but I thought Samantha was dead. Nope. Not as dead as one would have hoped. She and Todd somehow broke into the rooms, found Bob, and then managed to open a way out? Yep. That's... Yes, it's impossible. Bez, Moth, an investigation is underway, even as we speak. I've called Alma back from the lodge to look at the sigils underpinning the rooms. Whatever the error here, it will be corrected. This will not happen again. I recognize that this is most irregular, but in the grand scheme of things, what harm has been done? I mean, I somehow doubt that the loss of our groundskeeper will undo all of the hard work we've done over the centuries. Don't you agree? Architect, I don't know what you think this visit is, but it is not a friendly one. We're not here to listen to your excuses, not this time. Sorry, kid. Right into the deep end, I guess. I'll manage. The queen is pissed, Pen. And when she is pissed, she throws things. And not like vases or books. She throws knives and fire and lightning. People die. Our dear mother is just as angry, sister. The loss of Wolverike is... incalculably bad. He knows, well, everything. If the wrong someone were to acquire him, if he were to speak into the wrong ear... We're all dead. And not the fun kind of dead either. The really painful, excruciating kind of dead. There you go, exaggerating things as usual. My friends, the project is stable. The subjects in this iteration of the rooms are perfect fits. The returns we've seen, even at this early stage, are unlike anything we've managed before. Even better than impressive guests like Ms. Winters or the Admiral here. We will find Todd. We will find Bob. We will find Samantha Winters, and they will be dealt with. And if Queen Titania, or oh dear mother, have a problem with that, then please take back to them a very simple message. This is my office. I run this project, not them. If they have a problem with how I run the Grey Rooms, they can take it up with the Founder. Are you sure that this is the tone you wish to take, sister? The message you wish us to convey? Yes. Now. Unless there's anything else, the Admiral and I have a number of things to see to. Are you? Are you kicking us out? Yes. Thank you both for coming. It was... It was a pleasure to meet you both. Yeah, kid. The pleasure was all mine, dear boy. I do so hope we get a chance to speak again. Sister? Bez? What are you going to tell her? Moth. Yeah, yeah. Hold up a sec. She's got ears everywhere. This won't last long, but we won't need it. She's scared, right? It's not just me. No, it's not just you. She's hiding something, and it's not just this business with woe. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hmm. What is it? You, uh... 
You mind if I hitch a ride back to the mount with you? You're not returning to the Grove? If I go back to the Queen with no answers? With nothing actionable? No. I've seen her smite people for way less than that. Why the Mount? I, uh, know a guy. I don't want to say, but I might be able to work a deal, get some answers. Get a real lead on our wayward babes. All right. Sure. Take my arm, dear boy. Of course, my dear lady. By your leave. Early morning on the mount. Beautiful sunshine, birds singing. Angels we have heard on high, you know. It's all great. Right up until you realize it's like this all day, every day, forever. Fucking insufferable. Most of the folks I deal with up here pay for really thick walls. It's only inside, in the dark, that you can hear yourself think. That's why I like Maggie's place. People get this image of the mount like it's all halos and harps. And there's definitely places like that up here. But even in the holiest place in all the realms, people still have needs. Hey there, long years. (laughs) Jeb. What are you drinking? (laughs) Absinthe? Jeb is my kind of mortal. Dumb as a box of hammers and just as attractive. He's loyal to his boss, though, and doesn't water down his drinks. The Green Fairy's not my thing. Got anything new? Hmm... Lady of the house just got in a barrel of mead from the far side of the mount. What's on the label? Uh, Sutinger. Sure. I'll try anything once. You here for, uh, companionship? Or to talk to the lady of the house? The lady of the house. Maggie. The Magdalena. Mary Magdalene. Whatever you want to call her. She's been called worse. Neither for a change. Aishith and I are gonna have a little chat. She here? Yeah, came in a little while ago. Corner booth at the back. (laughs) You paying off a debt? I'm making a new one. Not sure yet. We'll see how the day goes. <sighs> Damn, that is a tasty mead. <laughs> yeah, that bunch ain't good for much, way I hear it. But they can ferment a damn fine mead. <sighs> mm-hmm. And put it on my tab? Your souls ain't any good here, Moth. You know that. Standing orders from the lady... From the lady of the house, yeah, yeah. I know. Thanks, Jeb. You keep your nose clean, pretty boy. I did a favor for the lady of the house once, a while back. Not bad having free drinks at the best bar in heaven. Or worst, I suppose, depends who you ask. I crossed the bar and saw her the moment I turned the corner. She was kind of hard to miss. Aisha towered over me, even sitting down. Six wings tucked neatly behind her back. Her hair was a bone white. Her eyes 
a steely gray. She took my breath away. I spend a lot of time with beautiful people, mind you, so that's saying something. <laughs> Better stop staring. <clears throat> ah, you came, and you're only an hour late. How refreshing. Princess, you wound me. I would never leave a lady of your standing waiting. Does that kind of flattery work with the boys and girls upstairs? Of course. I'm in a bit of a bind. I need some rather unique information. Just the kind of thing that comes across your plate. How droll. I expected as much. Sit. Would you like some mead? I can get Jeb to pour us another. Not my kind of drink. Too sweet. All right. Probably best if you just out with it, Moth. This is about as chatty as I get. <laughs> Aren't prostitutes supposed to be good conversationalists? Maybe the new ones are. I've been in the trade for a few centuries too long for that bullshit. Fair enough. I'm looking for a lost demon. Lost as in you don't know where a demon is? Or lost as in the lost demons? The twelve demonic soldiers that followed Abaddon into the far and were never seen again? Uh, the former. I had a demon. Until recently, I knew where he was. Now, I don't. Ah. Uh, carry on. How much do you know about the, um... The Grey Rooms Project? Scam to skim souls out of hell. I assume started by one of the Dukes. I don't know who, but I have a guess. And backed by funding from a diverse group of investors. You're tied up in that? Uh-huh. Interesting. That makes sense, so. Your Queen Titania certainly has been spending lavishly of late. <laughs> yeah, that's our gal. Anyway, one of the demons working the project had a falling out with management. So they tucked him away in a nice little hole. And somehow he managed to escape from a place where... Well, I don't completely understand it myself, but the word impossible got thrown around a lot. No way he should have been able to do what he did. I see. And who is this wayward soul? His name is Wolverike. He gets called Bob a lot by the... I guess by the mortals. Ah. Interesting. I knew right away that the Princess of Consorts, this angelic queen of hookers, knew something about our missing Bob. She wasn't any kind of liar. She didn't have to be. They call whoring the world's oldest profession. And the joke goes that the second oldest profession is spying. But Isheth would tell you straight-faced they're one in the same. Other information brokers I deal with can tell me the what's and the when's. But the why's. For those, I go to the princess. I can't give this to you for free, Moth. Not this one. <sighs> I figured... What do you have to trade? And don't say souls, I'm not interested. Oh, you know me. Secrets of the trees, right? I know all sorts of things you might like to know. Am I to interpret that as, you'll tell me anything I want to know? I just have to ask? Be a little more coy with me, princess. I still have my pants on. Hmm... Your proposal is acceptable. I have a number of things I'd like to ask you. I'll contact you with the specifics once I've narrowed it down. Agreed? Agreed. You really need to find this demon, don't you? I don't recall you being nearly this generous before. I really do. All right. Let me answer your question with a tale. 
Do we really need this? At the beginning of the universe, reality was an ocean of souls, a miasma of potential, untapped and untamed. Things slipped through the cracks of the still-cooling universe. Titanic beings that swam along the soul currents, feeding on the potential of life itself. These were the creatures we would come to know as the Far. In response, the factions formed. A tale you know all too well, and so I will not bore you with the retelling. Thank you. A great war was fought to end the dominance of the Far. Those that were not slain were sealed away forever, mere shadows of their former selves. After the battles were done, the factions retreated to their corners. They formed retreats from the Soul Currents, gathering potential that had not already settled down into the mortal realms. Great workings that serve them to this day. Am I boring you? Uh, kinda. This going somewhere? Your people built the Grove, mine the Mount, and the demons the Hells. Lucifer had very specific ideas in mind. Demons need strong boundaries to be successful, you know? So Hell's army is quite rigid, quite structured. Each layer for such and such type of mortal, a duke for each layer, etc., etc. Uh-huh. Bullshit. What? Come again now? Have you met Lucifer? I can't say I've had the pleasure. His reputation is largely good public relations. He's fallible. The definition of fallibility, one might say. And on his first try creating an entire realm, he nailed it. Created the perfect structure for the demons, their armies, and their soul harvest. He... He what? The Hells are try number two? Yes. Wait, so there's a realm out there, made out of the stuff from the start of the universe? Yes. That's not the Grove, the Mount, the Far, or the Hells? The Far isn't really much of a place, technically, but yes. And it's just... sitting there? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. This is fascinating, but... What does this have to do with Bob? You tell me Bob was in an inescapable prison in the Hells. I know something of how those magics work. Some of the alienists who might have worked on such a project. They're clever. Too clever. Their spell work would have had to be very specific. The most powerful magics always are. And if you say he escaped from an inescapable place... Well, there is a place in all of reality that their gray rooms almost certainly did not account for. Princess, I could kiss you, but I won't. Don't really want to be devoured today. Hmm. How do I get in there? I don't know, but that shouldn't be a problem. If I'm correct and a duke is involved in the creation of the project... They'll know how to get there. Just ask them. There is a duke involved. <laughs> that one's for free. Hardly a revelation. I take it you need to get going? <sighs> you bet your sweet ass I do. Very well. I'll contact you with the details of my request for information. Don't be surprised when it's more than you want to give up. If we find this guy, Princess, it'll be worth it. Very, very worth it.
Care for a smoke, Admiral? No, thank you, sir. I'm good with the bourbon for now. Suit yourself. This facade here, at the top of the hotel, is supposed to be a mortal city, right? Before my time. But yes, it was a tool to control the guest, Samantha Winters. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I know how the Brimstone crew thinks. I more meant, like, how accurate is it? Oh, fairly accurate, I'd say. The smell of pollution and filth packing the population into tight, substandard conditions. Why do you ask? The Grove is... It's nothing like this. Trees as far as the eye can see. Our cities hang among the branches. The towers soar above the canopy with their roots in the loam. Birds move in great flocks that blot out the sun. Beasts leap and bound wherever they please, down streets and over rooftops. If a servant of the queen is hungry, they merely have to reach up and pluck fruit off the vine. We have this plant that grows in most house courtyards. It draws water up from the forest floor, and its uppermost cap ferments nectar into a delicious mead. A form of music is associated with every day on our calendar. The youngest servants of Her Majesty sit atop balconies overlooking the main thoroughfares. As the sun begins to set, they strike up their instruments. The fiddles, pipes, and drums are chaos at first. Just noise. But one by one, the musicians fall into sync with each other. Until you can walk from one end of the city to the other and hear a chain of music unbroken. A score for the universe. The heartbeat of the grove made manifest. Until the last rays of sunlight fade beneath the horizon. Sounds... It sounds quite beautiful. It is. Oh, it is. I think I like it better here. Mother is just going to have to understand that there are larger concerns. Sister dear, <laughs> when have you ever known Mother to be understanding about anything? Fair enough. Any news? Oh, yes, the best kind, you clever boy. Sit, gentlemen. We have much to tell. <sighs> I will start with... <clears throat> I will start with an apology. Whatever for? Well... It's possible I may have been too... dismissive. During our last meeting, you have to understand Bob's escape is unprecedented in the project's history. I was still... digesting it. When you arrived, I sought to contain and control the issue. But as... Beziel has pointed out to me, we are ultimately on the same side here. Thank you, Moth, for showing initiative, for seeking answers. The fact that we can stand here today with a plan of action in hand and ratified, it's impressive. Most impressive. Just doing what I do, Pen. 
If you don't mind my saying so, Architect, it's still a lot for me to take in as well. What did the Founder have to say? Mother and Belial have approved a bold plan of action. It will resolve the issue of Bob and Samantha Winters and allow the Grey Rooms to step out of the shadows. It will be something of a coming out party for all of us. I'm not sure I follow. We were just talking about your hard work, Admiral. Yes? The skirmish between the upper layers could not have come at a better time. Belial's invitation to the meeting with the Dukes was the perfect opportunity to speak with Lucifer. To show him everything we've accomplished with the project. To describe some of the challenges we've faced. And thanks to Moth here, to offer solutions to those challenges. We got the okay to go into the... wherever it is, the old version of Hell. As it turns out, this hidey hole has been a problem for Mother as well. Apparently some... delinquents from the Mount are using it as a mustering ground. Demons and angels? Side by side, is that unusual? Not our word for ourselves, Admiral. But yes, my people and pens are related, obviously. Ours is not the only blood tie. So, not so unusual. Not unusual, but problematic. I confirmed it with Alma, this other space was not accounted for in the design of the project. So the wards that disallow travel beyond the Grey Rooms would not have worked properly against this unexpected magic. She's shoring them up now. This will never happen again. That's great for tomorrow. What about today? What's the move? The move, I believe is a show of force. Admiral, how much strength do you think we should muster in the next few hours? In the next? Let's see. I'm still getting acquainted with the commanders, but I'd say the Founder can muster a half dozen legions. Most of the rest of his forces are deployed to ensure the other layers play nice. I can issue the orders now, if you like, but in the meantime, I'd very much like to go and retrieve another John from a locus. He's incredibly powerful and could mean the difference if things get strange. Excellent work, Admiral. And I approve of your plan. Bez? Mother has agreed to lend us a pair of cohorts. Not many soldiers, but everyone a power. They'll be carrying their shields and spears, armed for battle. We just have to be careful. For, um, obvious reasons. They can't muster out of the hells. I think I can help with that. I'm assuming we want to move as soon as possible? Quite so. Right. Talking to Her Majesty will take time, convincing her even longer. Troops from the Grove would be a hell of a right hook, but... I think I can pitch in another way. Did the Founder tell you how to get to this... place? Yes. With permission from Lucifer himself to enter his ancient realm. The fucking lightful. Do you have to be here in the Hells to open the door? I... What an intriguing idea. I'd have to ask Alma. But I don't think so. No. Why? Great. Then that's how you get a bunch of angels and demons to march together. Have them meet in the grove. If I go now, I can have a site lined up by the time you're ready to muster. Just send along one or two of your fancy alienists, and you can open the door from our end. Titania won't be... Um, annoyed at having soldiers from other realms walking through her glades? It is better to ask for forgiveness than permission, my lady. 
If I can go to the royals with the tale of how we sorted this all out ourselves, well, it'll go a long way towards earning favor at court. I know I'm still new at this, but you mentioned this is our coming out party. What did you mean by that? It's quite simple, Admiral. The Grey Rooms have operated in the shadows these long centuries. Avoided the spotlight. Done our best to maintain the secrecy of the project. From today forward, that ends. The Founder is going to announce the rooms to the Dukes. Mother will do the same for the choirs. <laughs> Does that mean Her Majesty can finally lord it over the other courts? Absolutely. Huh. It'll be nice to be on her good side again. For a while, anyway. The direct answer to your question, Admiral, is that things are about to get much more interesting around here. The Hells, the Mount, the Grove, and the far, united in common cause. A new faction in the universe, standing alongside the old ones. And now, everyone will know. But first... Yes, quite right. But first, we hunt down Wo Varaik. We hunt down Bob. And we end him. Sure, you can't like you know, whamming it rain away. <sighs> For the last time, that's not how this works. I can't just make it do whatever I want. Well, it's magic, innit? Can't you just magic one thing into another? No! Todd, given that she survived such unusual circumstances and escorted us across this strange realm for the last few weeks, Perhaps we should take Miss Winters at her word. <sighs> all right, all right. It'd just be nice not to be dripping all over your nice captain's cabin or whatever this is. I think I've got some spare towels. Hang on. This is where you've been living. Yep. She's called the last. I doubt she'll ever sail again, but a lot of the others live here by the water. By the docks. And she makes for a heck of a scenic apartment. <laughs> when it's not raining. Yeah. Where did all this come from? The ship or my things? Both. You said we are still in the Hells, but I've been to every layer, and I've never seen a place in Lucifer's domain that looked like this. Yeah. Well, there was that forest a few days ago, and all those ruins are on the roadside. <laughs> what gives, Miss Winners? Uh, you... you guys want tea? Ooh, yes, please. Good. I want tea. Samantha. This is... It's 
complicated. We're in the hells, yes, but not, uh, your hells. Come again. Look, I've had it explained to me a few times by the other members of the group. Lucifer screwed up, I guess, the first time he tried to make the hells. So, instead of scrapping it or remaking it entirely, he just abandoned this place and then made the multi-layer shit show we all know and love. Poppycock. Uh, isn't it? Oh, Poppycock. I ain't never heard of an old version of hell. I've heard rumors a long time ago, but I thought they were just that. If we are where you say we are, Samantha, this is a dear secret indeed, and we are considerably safer than we might be otherwise. I'm not even sure the Warden knows of this place. So, uh, Sam, uh, you, you kept me in the dark this whole time, eh? Who are all those people? There's a whole little town here. And the people on the road look like all kinds. I couldn't figure out if they were mortals or, or elves or angels or what. They were... All kinds. This place is a kind of refuge from the factions. From the exploitation of mortals by the Grove, the Mount, and the Hells. Bob, I'm part of a resistance. They don't call it that, not really. They call themselves Defiant. A resistance. Some kind of terrorist cell. What's their goal? They didn't... uh, Well, they didn't really have a goal at all before I showed up. Apparently folks just found their way in. Dribs and drabs over the centuries. Word spread and people from the different factions that didn't want to play their part or whatever ended up here. And... No. Miss, is this why you reached out to me? Why, why we got Bob out of the rooms? Yes. <sighs> Bob, you said you wanted to understand why you were changing, right? Whatever I did to you, you want to figure it out? Very badly. As I said... Demons are not supposed to be able to... I can. That's my power, see? It has something to do with the very nature of reality. That's why my... Whammy, or whatever. Why I can't just flip the weather on a whim, Todd. I don't want to mess around with what rain is. (sighs) Both of you know what I used to be. Before I died, I was a... I was a monster. I used this gift to twist people up. I did things to my world. I... I invited powerful creatures, beasts, and monsters to join me in ruling the lesser people. After I died, well, I've met some people that I think came from my world here. Their lives were brutal, even after the bitch queen was dead. That's why I'm here, guys. That's why I reached out to you, Todd. That's why we needed you, Bob. The Resistance didn't have a purpose before I came along. And now, it does. Change. Yes. What? Sorry, you lost me. You said, in the rooms, you said that you weren't that man anymore. Remember? The Todd that blew up the domes. Damn right I'm not. And you wanted to prove that. That's why you helped me. Well, then you're my friend, you daft old goat. (laughs) But yeah, I, I did it to prove I ain't him. This refuge, it's... You said it was Lucifer's first iteration. I knew you'd get it. Look, I, I'm touched and excited and happy all at the same time, but, but I'm still in the dark here. You want to let poor old groundskeeper in on his big secret? She means to undo it all, man. 
to upturn the realms and unseat the factions. Holy hell. Oh, how? Why? You know why. You've seen what the factions mean. Scraping and backstabbing. Fighting over every scrap. Mortals, nothing more than coins that can scream. Some of the others told me about why the factions came into play. The old war, the... Far, I guess you call them? But that was a long time ago. Things are different now. We don't need a bunch of queens and dukes and angelic hosts running things. Well, and it's more than that, yeah? Bob would... I don't know, it, hitting the big button or whatever, would it, would it unchain all the demons? Free to grow from the courts, let the hosts do whatever they want? I don't... I don't know. But I assume that's the supposition your friends are running with. <laughs> Cookie for the smart demon. Okay, right. So that's... Why? I, I, I kind of get it if I squint a bit, but... But how? What's the button? Why do you need Bob? We may look like we're seated on a sailing ship, floating in choppy seas. But in truth, we are swimming in pure soul stuff. If Lucifer created this place during the Faction War, and then abandoned it, the essence of this place is... Well, it's pure. It's untainted by the Dukes, or the Hosts, or the Courts. I'm new to this stuff too, Todd. But the way I understand it, the factions have made and remade their sanctums over and over and over again. So the stuff that makes up, say, the sixth layer, it's been around the block. Or, more recently, it's been imported from the mortal realms as a product of the Grey Rooms. Those souls are valuable, mutable, but tarnished. So you're saying is, what you're you saying is... This place is a weapon. Yep. Uh, saying you need Bob to uh, fire it. Maybe. There are a bunch of mortals here. Folks from the Grove and the Mount. Even a guy from the Far comes here every once in a while. But until recently, no demons. I guess your people... Uh... They do not call us the Chained Ones without reason. Some others have arrived from the Hells. Yeah. They were the ones who told us about you and the Admiral and everything. They're why I knew to reach out to Todd. Steve and Molly? <laughs> well, Bob our biscuits. Interesting. I'd like to speak with them. But why did you bring up my people? And how can I fire the weapon, as Todd put it? <laughs> no idea. That's why we came to get you. I'm about as good at magic as I was at keeping plants alive back at my apartment. Whammy, notwithstanding. And Steve and Molly seem... Um... Young. For demons, yeah. So, the hope is that a group of individuals from the mortal realms, the hells, the mount, and the grove might be able to figure out how to unseal the potential of this abandoned realm and undo millennia of stagnation. Yep. And I'm the old man in the room. Sorry I didn't come get you just for old time's sake, but yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that sound in a while. So, does that creepy mannequin laugh mean you'll help us? <laughs> Miss Winters, I would be honored. How do we get started? Well, let's get some sleep. Then tomorrow we go meet the rest of the crew. Todd, Bob, welcome to the Defiant.
I stepped back into hell, the heat and sulfur washing across my face. It was almost soothing now, comforting, as strange as it might sound, a homecoming of sorts. At my side was another warlock of Astaroth, another John. He was too useful to leave to the whims of the universe, and so I'd plucked him from another locus, a loyal soldier for my army. I left him in the care of Rasputin, Bran, the witch, Nolan, and the others. They'd get to know each other again, make themselves ready for what was to come. That was my hope, anyway. I'd done everything I could, prepared them every way I knew how. I stood with the shade of my son on the balcony, looking down on the sixth layer from Belial's tower. We were quiet as we considered the future, a future we'd forged together. Two Beckett's against the universe. It had always been that way, even when I was alive. My family had been just an afterthought in galactic politics. Well-connected, wealthy, certainly, but of no real merit. My grandfather had changed all of that. He'd set out a vision for the future, started a plot that would take three lifetimes to see completed. Now here we were again, the Becketts against the universe. If we were going to survive, if we were going to thrive as servants of hell, it would be on our own merits. Our choices drove us, they defined us. Now we would see our choices made real. We would grasp the future in both hands. And if everything went to plan, we would once again sit atop a throne of our own making. not quite occurred to me until the second or third day of freedom from the rooms, just how much of myself I'd lost in my escape. I didn't care about the project. Not anymore. After everything that had happened, it was clear whatever relationships I'd had with the other members of management were ashes in the wind. But my few tangible belongings, the things I'd left behind. I found that I missed them quite terribly. My journals, cataloging my time with the project, my books of haiku, the few little knick-knacks and souvenirs I'd acquired during my time with Belial as my chain holder. It was all so mortal. I suppose. To grow attached to parchment and ink. To see your own vain scribblings as a testament to the passage of time. And yet, as I perused this tome lent to me by Miss Winters, I found myself profoundly saddened. With my belongings destroyed, as they no doubt had been, what was left to mark the centuries I'd been attendant to the Grey Rooms. The future was a mystery, which was a novelty I was growing to appreciate. But I'd long found that reflecting upon the past was a form of easy solace, and a way to give context to troubling events in the present. I had no idea what was to come, and without my past to guard my spirit and strengthen my resolve, I supposed I would have to rely on my friends. These mortal allies who had braved the Grey Rooms to free me from eternal torment. It was an uneasy feeling, knowing I owed so much and could offer so little. But then, if Samantha's power was change itself, 
if the goal of the Defiant was to reshape the realms, then I supposed I would have to acclimatize myself to a bit of uncertainty. Wouldn't I? Here we are, on the precipice of a brand new day, at the threshold of reimagining the very firmament of the cosmos. And I find that redefining the realms requires a frankly shocking amount of paperwork. We may be living in the most interesting of times, but the bureaucracy of the realms grinds ever onward. My quill scrawled endlessly across statements of intent, troop mustering forms, and Byzantine inquiry letters. These parchments were to be forwarded to every duke of hell, every king and queen of the courts, every principality and heavenly choir. Then there were the endless questions arriving from Moth and Bez. The luminaries of the mount and the grove sought clarity on every decision we'd ever made. Why every guest was chosen, why each iteration of the room was selected. It was exhausting, to be quite honest. I pinched my nose, massaged my temples. Terribly mortal gestures, I know. I would never have used them if anyone else had been present. But they were soothing, nonetheless. I noticed that my drink had cooled and resisted, yet again, the urge to call for my attendant. Another disappointment. Another substandard employee that I'd need to see dealt with eventually. In the meantime... I would roost atop the tower. As Beckett and the founder take the field, my battles will be with paper and ink and pleasantries. Our new faction, our new power, shall stand and be counted alongside the greatest of the old. I bent my head to yet another page and began a new missive, the same way I had done so many others before. We are called the Grey Rooms, and we will be hidden no longer. Since we got here, wherever here is, I've taken a rise in with the dawn. Why there's a sunrise or docks or water or any of it is beyond me. I tried to ask Miss Winters a few times when she started nattering on about original sin and the true nature of Lucifer. <laughs> Best I got out of it is like he only got as far as making a place where he could make mortals feel comfortable when he called it quits. Sort of like the grey rooms. Come to think of it. Hmm. 
Anyway, this is the nicest place I've lived in well, since I died, I suppose. Nobody here threatening to take out my eyes or staple my mouth or any of that. It's a good change of pace. The couple of weeks since we left the Grey Rooms have been some of the calmest, easiest, and... Hey, I've got for all the friends, it seems like. Bob's finally come round. Managed to get him to laugh a few times. Miss Winters is so intense. Hardly laughs or smiles, really. He's always been a good sort. Must have to get past all the destiny and drama to see it. As for old Todd, it's nice to be a part of something I can actually believe in. Feel like I'm contributing. Or not just tidying up after the demons. Todd, drag that carcass over here. Todd, clean up that explosion of blood over there. I told Bob that I wanted to prove I ain't that guy. The me what blew up the domes. I think I done that. And more. Now I'm just happy to be... whoever I am. To sit and look out over the water. Help out with odd jobs. Handyman to the resistance, I suppose. The only thing is... I got a bad sort of feeling. Like when, like, like when there was a storm blowing in over the habitats. You feel it in the air all up and down your skin. I got that feeling now. I spent a long time, too long, being that psychopath's pet mortal. The warden ain't gonna give up looking for us. Nor the founder. Nor Bleeding Nora, the architect. Oh, boy. But that's a problem for the Todd of tomorrow. Today, I just have to worry about what's for lunch. <laughs> Wonder if these angels and elves and things have ever had a good batch of chilli. <laughs> I signaled down the bar, and Jeb made his way over. He poured me another drink, and I nodded in thanks for his trouble. Maggie's was quiet tonight. An unusual state of affairs, but then... There was something in the air, wasn't there? All the good little winged boys and girls must be feeling the change as much as I was. The realms had been settled down for a long, long time. Too long. In theory, I served beings that were immortal. The queens and kings of the court had been around at the dawn of time. But on the job... I'd gotten to see entropy, death, up close and personal. And there are few constants in the universe, and one that, far as I could tell, was inescapable. Entropy gets paid its due, one way or another, every single time. I had spent the day speaking with Penn and Beziel's mother. Charming woman. I'd walked away from that handshake with a host of warriors in my proverbial pocket, trained and spoiling for a fight. The Grey Rooms, as a faction of its own, was looking less and less like a pipe dream, and more like an all-too-real reality. I should have been happy. Should have downed my Viking juice with a grin. Walked out of this brothel with a skip in my step. But I wasn't. 
and I didn't. Something ain't sitting right. Something ain't sitting right about all of this. Too many coincidences, too many unknowns. Maybe I'm just showing my age here, but it feels like too much change all at once. That's the problem, I suppose. When you serve greater beings whose plans span the ages, you end up feeling like a cog in a machine, spinning and spinning and not sure you're really ever going anywhere. I'm sure I'll suss it out. I always do. It's what I'm good at, after all. So I'll just sit here at the bar. Maybe go upstairs and pay some nice boy or girl a visit. And in time, this will work itself out. After all, what else have we got? But plenty of time. The shot stings as it goes down. Warm. Tasting a bit of blood and a bit of bile. I make a face, but I'm glad I've got the bottle for company tonight. The liquor that our runaways bring to the sanctuary is... Well... It's weird. I've had the stuff the servants of the Mount consider whiskey. Honeyed booze from the grove. And of course... Who can forget Demon Jen? I still remember Jake. Poor old Jake. Standing behind the bar. Just trying to pour a lady a drink. Most days, I consider myself a lucky woman. I'm still alive. I have a purpose. And the universe has seen fit to give me a gift. A weird, sometimes annoying often repellent gift, but one that lets me punch my way above my weight class. So, it's nice. Still, I've seen and done things I desperately wish I hadn't. Forget the days of the bitch queen. Just like Todd, I want to believe I was a different person. Not even me. Not really. No. Just me, me. Samantha Winters. I've done things that I think would make even old Bob raise an eyebrow. All for survival. All just to be able to open my eyes at the start of a new day and say, I'm here. I still exist. Crazy how desperately all of us, mortal or no, cling to existence. It's one of the few things we all have in common. All of us, defiant. It's why I think, in the end, we're gonna win. Why no dukes of hell or angelic hosts are gonna get in the way of our simple, visceral response to their bullshit. We aren't machines. We aren't cogs in a machine or coins to be spent. We're people, damn it. Not pieces on a chessboard or coins in a vault. We deserve the right to exist. Same as any of them highfalutin, fanged or winged or pointy-eared fuckity fucks. <sighs> I just hope the price we have to pay is one worth paying.
I looked down across the sixth layer of hell. My eyes traced the terrain I knew so very well. Valleys and choking black rivers, dark woods and decaying churches dotted the landscape. And everywhere, in tens and twenties, the dark and silent tombs that once bellowed with fire, the signature torture I'd worked out with the morning star so very, very long ago. (sighs) I could see it on his face when I sat with him in the palace. It had been some time since I'd been down to the tenth lair, a few centuries at least. Lucifer looked tired, the same exhaustion I feel in my blood and in my bones. Since the announcement of the project to the other dukes, to the courts and the hosts, and I've been asked one question over and over again. Why? Why come out of the shadows? Why hang out a banner as a new faction? Why upset the balance like this? Even if we are doing it with the blessing of our collective masters. It's because everything ends. We built the factions eons ago in self-defense for a war that's long since over for an enemy that doesn't even exist anymore. I've gripped the reins of power here in hell for countless mortal lifetimes and now uh, it's time to make way for something new. I can't remember the last time I saw a change on the horizon. That's why we're going to war. That's why my armies march. Why I'm going to smash my enemies on the other levels into shards of bone and meat. That's why we will hunt down Woe and his mortal friends and tear them asunder. I am Belial, Duke of the Sixth Layer of Hell, Lord of Heresy, and Master of the Walls of Dis. If my time is coming to an end, let it be such an end. And let the universe remember my passing long after I am gone. Bossman was super clear about what he wanted us to do with little old you. Indeed. We have been given a virtuous task by our master. We will not fail. <laughs> Did Brand say where we were taking this guy? Yet. He said that once we are on the field of battle, we must simply open the cage. Is that... Is, uh... that a good idea? I mean, He doesn't seem to be in the best of moods. (laughs) Yeah, open the cage. Let me taste your eyes. He is intense, yes. But his fury is not directed at us. Oh, is that so big guy? Who is it you want to kill? (laughs) 
I think he's asleep. Into the world approaching, he's taking a nap. Oi! Boom! <laughs> what? Were you asleep just now? I. I suppose I was. I didn't know that was a thing you guys could do. I... I believe it's... I believe it's the first time. Something about this place, perhaps. You have any good dreams? I don't. I don't remember. It was most agreeable. Drifting just below consciousness. Quite pleasant, actually. You do this every day. Ha! More than once if I can get away with it. But nobody finds me sleeping behind the barn or in the engine car. Hey. Those clouds were not quite so close when I began to rest my eyes. Yeah, storm's rolling in. Miss Winters says this hasn't happened here once. Not that anyone can remember. She thinks it's a sign. I didn't say... (sighs) Can't be too careful, is what I said. We've never seen bad weather like this. It has to mean something. (sighs) A bit literal, don't you think? I think it's just nice to have a bit of an heads up now and again, eh? The others are mustering in the big field outside of town. Folks from the Mount, the Grove, the Hells, everyone. We need to be ready in case, you know, company comes knocking. It's been months and no sign of pursuit. Why now? You understand this about as well as I do, old man. Both management comes looking for a fire. Well, (laughs) we're having for a hell of a surprise this time. Magnificent, isn't it? It's damned impressive, sir. It's a beautiful sight, Founder. When was the last time your armies mustered out like this? Oh, it's been... (laughs) some time. Too damn long, if you ask me. Oh, I don't know. I could have gone another few centuries without having to see this. Well said, cousin. But isn't there a certain poetic beauty to the scene? It's hard to get a sense from up here, Dad. How big are those things? A good question, son. Samuel is curious how large those um, scaly fellows are. The ones dragging the chains in the war in. Oh, the size of uh, Ash Manor, I'd say, (laughs) give or take. Does 
Does your good luck charm have any observations about our campaign to come, Admiral? Good luck charm. You haven't heard? The Admiral here has got a ghost of his dead kid following him around. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll ask him. What do you say, son? Hmm. Maybe. I think. I think maybe I can. The banner of the Grey rises, but not alone. I see blood on chains. Those chains are shattered. The rider approaches as the page turns. The journals hold the key, but will they know how to turn it? The sea swell with souls, and those long contained stir in the depths. Which of their tendrils will be the one to snap free? Trust not the secrets of the grove, nor the light of the mount. Only the child of both will be the one to stand alongside the chainless and calm of the rising tide. Admiral? Did he have anything to say? Oh, uh, yes. Apologies. It was just a bit vague. I'll talk to him about it later. Dad? What? Did... Did I say anything? Later, son. Ah, a shame. This glorious moment will usher in a new era. The most pleasant thought, architect. Yeah, yeah, hoist the sails and whatnot. Are we ready to do this, founder? Or you want my cousin here to flatter them to death? I fail to see why a little bit of decorum is out of line, even on the eve of battle. Well, that depends. Admiral, your preparations are complete? Yes, yes sir. The contingent from the grove is in position, as well as from the mount. Your forces will move in from the front, and my recruits will attempt a sort of flanking maneuver once we have the gate open. Which of you is coming with us? Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for anything. <laughs> We'd better get down there, then. Founder. Architect. We'll see you when it's done. Good luck to you all. I cannot wait for the next meeting of the board. It will be ever so engaging. Good luck, Admiral. I know you have this well in hand. As for me, well, I suppose I still have one thing more to do. The alienists are ready, Pen. Circle prepared and all that. Yes, sir. Body and soul, they are yours. Ready for what will be asked of them. All righty then, let's go spill some blood and open that gate.
suppose you could drop something like that on the gate. Seal it up. This is going to get very bad very quickly if we can't stop their reinforcements. Reinforcements? I have no of them. The demons out front are the shock troops. The founder has endless war plans for situations like this. And they'll no doubt have soldiers from the Grove and the Mount. Investments from the board. Bet they didn't expect our little crew, though, did they? No, they did not. But we will be quickly overwhelmed if we do nothing. Agreed. Todd, you've got to do the thing. Bob and I will stall them. What? The thing. The ritual. The one in the black book. The, the, the what? The one in the black book? The book you said never you to look at all we can think about too hard? That ritual? Yep. That one. Why isn't it for like emergencies only? I am not sure how much more emergent things can get, Todd. <laughs> Oh, well, okay, then he's old Todd to the rescue again, then, eh? <laughs> uh, all right, I'll be in the boat. You two, uh, uh, don't get dead. Ah, the wisdom of mortals. I mean, it's not the worst advice. You said we would stall them. Do you have any ideas on how to do that? Or was that just hopeful thinking? I have an idea, but you're not going to like it. Try me. I could use my power on you. You're right. I don't like it. Listen. I thought you told Todd your power was change. It is. And I'm hoping a nice, powerful demon like you, amped up with some of... whatever, my whammy, will make for a nice, big distraction. Plus, not like I'm going anywhere. I'll be right behind you. The last time your power touched me, you set me on a downward spiral that saw me lose my position, my self-confidence, and trapped me in the very project I'd administered for centuries. Yes, and you threw me into the pit, and I fell forever, and there were a lot of bugs, Bob. Did you know that? A lot of bugs in hell. It was gross. You and I both know you are in no shape to go full demon and fight them right now. No, I'm not. Then what do you have to lose? Very well. But I... Great, here we go. Get ready now! This is maybe 
the most important moment of your life. You, you just gotta do the one thing Miss Winners told you never ever to do. I just gotta crack the black book, contact our technical buddy, and invite him into our little hidey hole here. No, no, no problem. He's just prone to get report chilly. Hey. Uh, Alice. Beautiful. Oh, I know I am. Um, I never talk to you anymore. It's, it's been a long time. Well, to be honest, it's been a long time since I thought I deserved it. I'm real scared, sweetheart. We're way out on the pointy end here. And I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. You remember what I used to say to you, right? As I was headed out the door every day. What good can I do this day? Well, I'm not sure this is good. But it's what i got to do. You know... Keep Bob and Sam and all them folks out there just trying to live their lives safe. Give us a kiss, sweetheart. One more time. For luck. Sound off. <laughs> Let me at him. Da, we are yours to command, master. Ready when you are, boss. <laughs> of course. Whatever you need, Admiral. Samuel? Boss? No, no matter. I'm sure he's back on the sixth layer. Pull the cage through. Grizz, Moth, Caliban. I want the three of you to head up to the middle. Reinforce Belial's foot soldiers from behind. We're getting hammered up there. We need to buy time for the others to make it through. Cuz, cries, let's go cause some mayhem. <laughs> well said. <laughs> John, Grigori, there's a group of Grove Separatists making trouble down along that side of the field. See if you can deal with them. Their arrows will outrange even the soldiers from the mountain. They could prove deadly. At once, mister. You, uh, you sure you're okay? I was leaving you alone with... him? Don't worry, John. I can handle the warden. Go. Have some fun. That's what I do best, boss. Warden. Hey there, Admiral. Been too long. <laughs> Open up the cage, huh? Pity, please. Let me get a taste of that mortal meat again. <laughs> I'm going to open the cage, Warden. But you're not going to lay a finger on me. Oh? I'm not, am I? 
No, you're not. Because you don't want me. <sighs> you want Samantha Winters. <sighs> you want Todd Mathis. <sighs> You want Bob. Bob. Yes, let me, please, let me loose, please, let me out of the air. Hunt them, Warden. Find them. And you can do whatever you want. For as long as you want. Samantha! Samantha! Todd! Hello? <laughs> Who are you? Whoa, come now. This is a little embarrassing. You don't recognize me. I would have thought the face gave it away. You can't be. Of course, I'm you. Your demon self. Though I suppose it makes sense you don't recognize me. Did you notice how hard it was to channel your power to escape the Grey Rooms? I... The Warden tortured me. I was weak. Oh, we're weak, all right. But that was true long before the Warden ever laid a hand on you. I escaped the maze. I am not weak. We don't have a lot of time here, Woe. I'm just here to say goodbye. What are you talking about? You've changed. Too much. That's the nature of her power, she said. Well, demons can't change. We can't. It's a fundamental truth about those chained to the rock at the bottom of the world. So, if you're changing, I'm... I'm not a demon. No, you're not. What am I? I don't know. Something else. Something you're going to have to figure out without me. Our power is allowing us to reconnect. Just for a moment. Together, we'll hold off Belial's forces for as long as we can. But afterwards... Afterwards, you're not Wolverine. Not anymore. You're just... 
Bob. What if I don't want to change? Sorry, mortal, but I don't think that's a choice you get to make. Sam, thank you, Alice, thank you, whoever. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Excuse me, sir. I hope you don't mind if I, if I look away. Right, this is a regular. Yeah, I know. But the grey room, sir, the management, they've, they, they've, they've found us. They're attacking in force. And Bob thinks they've got more reinforcements on the way. We, we need help, and we need it fast. <laughs> Am I inviting you in? Yeah. I, well, that was what Miss Winter said to say, yes. Yeah. Bloody hell, all right. Exhibits of the far, I formally invite you to the realm of the defiant. Arise and be welcome here. That good enough? Right. I 
run and let them know. We'll see you soon. <sighs> Bloody hell, Ellis. That was... Whew, I really thought maybe this time... Warden. Tired. Ah. <laughs> uh, how'd you find me? M Miss Winners. Is she? Oh, she's alive. She wish she wasn't. I want to play with her some more later. <laughs> you know what? Turns out I also can make people say and do things they don't want to. <laughs> I just use. Pain. <laughs> it works every time. <laughs> Bob, will you come? Are you oh no, no. Sorry, <laughs> he's far too busy fighting at the gate. For all the good it'll do him. Oh, yeah. You were my favorite once, you little worm. You remember all the fun times we had? <laughs> oh, so much fun. You fucking psychopath. It was never fun. You broke me, wound me up like a damn toy and used me. That's all any of you fucking demons know how to do is use people. Oh, so angry. <laughs> I love it. I know I ain't coming back this time. You know what? It don't matter. You're gonna fuck off back to the sixth layer and play your little games. But the people here ain't gonna stop fighting. They wanna see the realms be different, better. And that, that's something worth fucking bleeding for. <laughs> So go ahead, you piece of shit. Go ahead and... Alice. this hmm. this book so hmm Sixth layer. They don't. Yeah, they don't appreciate me like they used to. No. I think I'll go collect good old Sam and Bob, and I'll hold up somewhere to have um a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the warden. The warden deserves to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> now what?
day 10. I've been trapped on this train for over a week. Every day, it's the same thing. Either me or my companions must choose, then we die. Zuck is handling him better than most. He is a soldier after all, but Finley? He seems more frantic. His brain's a bit more rattled each time. It may have something to do with him being more machine than man. There's no other way to explain it. Each train car exhibits significant signs of being larger on the inside rather than the outside. Looking out the window, it's painfully obvious. The scene is too... too perfect. Outside appears to be a hellish landscape similar to trips I took to the Cairo wastelands. The set pieces are like an elaborate stage play or projection that... Zuck, what the hell? Imani, get back. I bet they're carrying Findlay back towards the front of the train. Let me go! I know what you are! I know where I am, God damn it! Shut the hell up! Can't we throw him off the train? Not our call. Where's Daniel? You know we trapped your code for you! What more do you want? What more do you want? They're gone. It's clear. What the hell was that about? Who's Daniel? I don't know. I noticed it the last few times they brought him back. Every time he goes through one of the doors, he comes back either completely zonked or raving like a madman. Something different is happening to him. Wait, do you see that? There in the hallway? Is that Finley's recorder? I guess. I pretty much threw mine away when I got it. I've been using mine to keep track of some random things I've noticed around here. My head always feels like mush when I get back from one of the platforms. Survive, evade, resist, escape. What? It's a saying that my mercenary crew adopted. Basic instructions on what to do when captured by enemy forces. How much of your life do you remember? Before waking up on this train? I'm not sure. I know my name and what I do for a profession. But beyond that, it's hazy. Just bits and pieces. Give me the recorder. Let's see what's on it. Imani, look. I don't know how much time we have left, or if you'll even receive this message. But I'm out of options. My name is Dr. Finley Montgomery. I'm a cybernetic researcher and a genetic modification specialist. My life's research was dedicated to prolonging humanoid life and integrating technology with biological tissue. A few years ago, that goal was redirected to another, creating an artificial soul. Did he just say... An artificial soul? Every attempt to harness the power of contain, or create a soul failed. There were rumors that some of the more extreme religions went through unconventional measures to stop such a process from occurring. I needed funding for my research and turned to organized crime to fulfill the darker aspects concerning my projects. A local crime boss named Ripper supplied me with test subjects, equipment, and kept me off the authorities' radar. I, in turn, provided him with cyber enhancements and repairs. Thousands of life forms were sacrificed in the name of research. Thousands of souls were lost, mutated, or destroyed. Then, a true disaster. Admiral Beckett burned through our sector as his crew slowly took over the 12 galaxies. Admiral Beckett. Was he some kind of space navy commander? Admiral David Beckett was a legendary tyrant that conquered the 12 civilized galaxies. 
It took a large-scale rebellion to finally destroy his regime and eliminate his bloodline. I thought this was common knowledge. I was busy fighting for my own existence from unknown interdimensional threats. Sorry my civilization couldn't build a moon base big enough to impress Supreme Captain Dave, Lord of the Space Fish. Freetus. <laughs> Excuse me? My people are known as the Freetus, not fish. We're not the only intelligent aquatic race on Virex. The Beckett clan used us as frontline soldiers until we finally resisted. <sighs> Whatever. Hit play and let's get through this. Ripper came to warn me that trouble was on its way when the Admiralty soldiers attacked. The resulting flight took the only thing I cared about as much as my research. My son, Daniel. Daniel was my assistant, but more than that, he was my last reminder that underneath the circuit, I was still human. He shared my love of research, and was more obsessed than me with the desire to be the first to harness the power of a soul. He was the one that discovered how to use the power of the occult to overcome my scientific faults. Together, we created the first machine to trap a human soul. Unfortunately, it cost him his own. Well, what in the hell is going on in here? I was about to ask you the same thing. You don't get to ask me anything right now, meat sack. Something's come up, and it's time for one of you to pick door one. <laughs> or door two. So soon after Findlay? Findlay didn't produce the desired result on his last trip through. We had to, uh, hand him over to management. Management? The people who run this shit show. You want to meet the warden? Or maybe the- mm -mm, That's enough, cries. <laughs> Fine. Bottom line, it's time to choose. Who's next? There's something that's bothered me about you. <sighs> and what's that? Your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny right there. <laughs> I think I see your eye twitching under the bandages. <laughs> I know your face. I've seen it before. Hey, stop! <laughs> You move from the floor, bitch, and I'll rip your thin skin from your bones. We won't need either of you to choose who's next. We have a volunteer. Come along, Zuck. It's time for you to go through another door. What's with the titles on these doors? Falling or Bequest? Who comes up with these goofy names? What'll it be, Zucky? Suck my... If you don't choose a door, I can't guarantee that anyone will be in a safe place when you wake back up. You think dying inside the doors hurts? Wait till it happens out here. Fine. <laughs> Don't think this is over. What's with the guests and these attitudes? Have all the attendants had this problem? 
With him, it doesn't matter. You still mad at what he done to you? He didn't do anything. I don't enjoy the games of mortals. Things tend to get messy. Ah, oh, I like it when you talk rough and scary. <laughs> Let's see if we can work out this frustration in another way. <laughs> hmm. Another time. We need to attend to the good doctor and find out why his memory walls are not holding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work, work, work. Cal, all I'm saying is that I like this side of you. You turning a blind eye while letting me play it rough with Fishboy? Well, it excites a girl. Hmm. <laughs> You're not going to let this go, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, what are we going to do with uh, the one we had to put in chains? That robot fuck will be fine. He's just... He just needs to shut the fuck up. No, uh, our special angelic friend. Oh, him. I think we should recheck his restraints in the warding. I don't trust those restraints. If the architect wanted him out of the picture, she should have just let us kill him. <laughs> Do you have that kind of power? Why don't you come back to my room and I'll show you. <laughs> Why don't you check on the doctor? Hmm? I'll see if I can convince Imani to make her next choice. Without all the mortal drama associated with making a decision. Sure. I'll do all the heavy lifting. Wouldn't want you to ruin those soft hands. Also, 
The interference on these magnetic recorders easily picks up the changes. Moving from one caller to the other isn't random either. A hidden sensor reads the desire of the front occupant and manifests the desired reality. The only thing I can't figure out is why movement is simulated in all the rooms. Why a train? I think that... It's because we are moving. <laughs> You need a bell or something. Make some noise next time. <laughs> Come. Dine with me. We'll talk. Do I have a choice? Ironically, yes, you do. I could force you, but things around here run much smoother when you comply. Hmm? I think I'll just go then. <sighs> Why is it that humans always put up the most resistance? <laughs> A little thing called free will. Ah, yes. The infamous free will of humans. <laughs> uh, give me a break. In almost every reality, all you do is destroy yourselves with your free will. <laughs> What do you mean in almost every reality? Have a seat. How's your time been in the Grey Rooms? Constant paranoia, demonic captors, oh, and dying all the time? It's been a great stay. <laughs> well, it's all part of the process. Wine? You keep saying that, but I'm having a real hard time believing you. And no, I don't want your damn wine. I wish management would just send you to us intact. I think it would make this process easier. Intact? Is there something we're missing? What is the last thing you remember before arriving on this train? I was separated from my battle group in London. No, I, uh, I isolated myself. I found information at a dig site about a weapon that could help us fight back against the monsters. Liber Altier Mundi. The Book of the Other World. How did you... How did I know? I arranged for you to find it. Well, my mother and her associates. That doesn't make sense. Hmm. Do you remember what happened afterward? I... 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 Um, I, I don't know. I woke up here. Huh. Uh, what's it worth to you? Hmm? To know how you got here. I'd rather know why I'm here than how. I don't even know where here is. Those are easy questions to answer. You are here to choose. And you're on the Grey Room's Silver Express. Choose? Do you mean the platforms, the doors? Hmm. Yes. Does it matter which door I pick? Why do I even have to pick a door at all? It doesn't matter what door you pick. Only that a choice is made. If you don't, the results are, uh, less than optimal. Hmm. How about we make a deal? Not interested. I'll return some of your memories to you. It will help fill in some missing pieces, but only if you pick a door with no resistance. How does that help me? It will grant you some much-needed clarity, and you can help us with the other guest, Findlay. His mind is fracturing beyond our ability to repair. I think you may be able to help him. How can I help? I can't fix a brain. That's where your returned memories come into play. 
You unlocked the secrets of the book once. I believe the knowledge will help both of us reach the same goals. Hmm? Get this project back on track. What about Zuck? What about it? You and your partner. What's her name? Cries? You were pretty rough at the last platform. His people are difficult under the best of circumstances. I think he was sent here as my punishment. You don't exactly look like you're suffering. He's the reason I'm stuck in servitude to this damn place instead of at my mother's side. He's the reason I have to wear this mask. Hmm. Do we have a deal or not? All right. Deal. Excellent. Let's move to the exit. We'll be stopping soon. Good. <laughs> uh, this is great. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> you demon bitch. Aww. That's the nicest thing anyone said to me in a while. How are you overcoming the memory blocks? What makes you so goddamn special? Where's my son? Where's Daniel? You can remember everything, but you don't remember killing your own son. Interesting. He didn't die. He transcended. That's what I said. He died. <laughs> Impossible. Nothing in any reality is created or destroyed. It merely changes form. Daniel transcended into a pure soul. And you stole him before I could stabilize his vessel. You are going to give a robot a soul. Uh, that's not how any of this works. You talk of rules and natural laws. How about machines don't get fucking souls? Why not? Because then the soul would be trapped on the ephemeral plane. Do you think hell is going to be denied its soul traffic? Or the mount... All because of a, 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 a fluke loophole? <laughs> I knew it. I knew this was hell. <laughs> uh, fuck. It appears Daniel was more right than he will ever know. <laughs> Which master do you serve? Which circle do you serve under? If, if I tell you, 
You gonna spill how you overcame the memory blocks? Never. <laughs> I think your usefulness to this project is over. There you are. What the fuck? Come on, Doc. We gotta go. Look, how did you find me? Never mind. Get me off this contraption. Entitlement, or thank you for calling. I appreciate your cooperation. I don't know how I'm supposed to help Finley or how you're going to return my memories. Have you made your choice? Entitlement somehow feels fitting, given the nature of this place. Are you going to return my memories? Right now. Completely fucked. Calm down. All we have to do is f- What has anyone calmed down after being told to do so? You tree-hugging elves are all the same. I wasn't the one who questioned him alone, hmm? You were impatient. As always. <laughs> Where were you? Management wants answers, and you just disappeared. I ensured that our female guest would no longer be a problem. <laughs> yeah? Well, if we didn't have the extra protections put in place by the Ilianist Lodge, they might have found a way to escape. Escape where? Further into hell? <laughs> Seriously? We'll be lucky if management doesn't erase our existence at this rate. We didn't exactly leave the big battle at a good time. Belial is gonna be pissed when he finds out. should be summoning more demon spawn for use there, not here in the gray rooms. And how the fuck did that bitch get her magic back? I only meant to return some of her non-essential memories. The very nature of these rooms makes magic tricky at best. At least we still have the angel contained. The Roboman thinks he's his son. <laughs> we need to keep Azriel away from them. I'll renew the wards on his chains. Then we'll take care of our guests. There. That should hold until we deal with our other problems. I'll help guide the one called Findlay. He'll lead the group here, then we can spring our trap. Call upon your minions to help motivate our guests. We're fucked. We're so fucked.
Yeah, now we're on the side of a mountain and still inside of a train car. Jesus, suck. I thought soldiers paid attention to little details. For the last time, the train cars are pockets of an alternate reality. A subspace. And we're in hell. Sure, science stuff. Got it. I don't even know what system hell is in, but whatever. I don't think our escape plan is working. I'm not leaving without Daniel. There could be an infinite amount of train cars. We don't even know if your son's here. I say you let me try to manipulate the space. Uh, your type of energy could be very disruptive. Unintended consequences and all that. But if you think you can control it... time before you throw half a mountain. What did I say about control? You're gonna collapse for space with us inside it, or worse! I'm sorry. It's all still coming back to me. This power sometimes kind of feels like holding a skillet over a stove. Over here! I found the passage to the next car. Imani, please, for all our sakes, see if you can exercise just a bit more restraint. Oh, I hate being near her when she uses her mojo. It makes me feel like static inside of a radio. This is new. This room is different from the others. That's because it's been altered. So, we're in a giant abandoned factory at night? Wish I could talk to the madman who created this place. Huh, they're keeping with the we're on a train motif. Feels odd being in an open space, but when I look out the window, everything is in motion. Uh, technically, the spaces are in constant motion. Shh. Did you hear chains? Look, there at the end, I see someone. They're chained to the wall. Daniel? Wait. Something's off. It feels like... Someone's watching you. You're mine, bitch! Bring it on. Hello, Zuck. Watch out. He's charged with a strange energy. I can see it glowing beneath his skin. I don't think you need your mask anymore. It was somewhat restrictive. What the hell? I shot him in the face on Lupin 7. I think it's about time we settle this. Care to tell me who paid you to do it? <laughs> Your mother, Queen Tatiana. A liar. Who do you think supplied the ammunition? Daniel! Daniel, stay there! I'm on my way! Hold 
still. I'll free you. I thought this was supposed to be your domain. It is. My mother would never consort with your kind. It wasn't the first job she was asking me to do. Fake loyalty. Don't like getting your hands dirty. <laughs> Dries, call them in now. To save him, it was it was too much. I hey, snap out of it. We still need to find a safe place to lay low. How the hell did the train survive all of that energy? Looks like most of it's still intact. Over there, it looks like part of a platform. like the look of that beast. There's only one door. You thinking what I'm thinking? I don't know if it'll allow both of us to enter. No time to test any theories. Go, go, go. The Architect's gonna be pissed that we let the Angel free. Not as pissed as Billy I was going to be if we don't get back to the real battle in that other realm. Do they both go through the door at the same time? Isn't that dangerous? Hmm. I don't really know. The rooms are a unique place in the realms. It may be just a stroke of luck we needed. Regardless, souls will continue to flow into the Grey Rooms and our guests will both be weakened on their return. Where'd Roboman go? He was destroyed, along with most of our reinforcements when Azriel teleported back to the Mount. The amount of energy needed to escape almost destroyed the rooms. The girl, the Imani, saved everything. <laughs> yeah, but not everyone. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry about your beast. We need to return to the battlefield. Moth needs our assistance. I doubt your cousin needs anyone's help. He's done just fine on his own. Which worries me why he's reaching out now. Let's go. We can worry about the rooms later. Bring your Baylor. We may need him. Of Choices and Flames, Part 2. Written by Michael Zinke and Arthur Unk. Musical composition is by J.M. Scherf. Episode artwork, web development, and creative direction by Cassie Pertit. 
Social media and Patreon management is by Brooks Bigley. Videography is by Hale Scherf. Community management is by Tori Miller. And audio engineering and sound design is by me, Jason Wilson. Well, season four of The Grey Rooms is in the books. And the Silver Express is running full steam ahead towards the finale. So join us next week for that epic ending and all the horrors that come with it. We hope you enjoyed walking with us down memory lane. It was great to see new faces and old. Rip Todd Mathis. Your chili recipe will forever be etched in the dark corner of our hearts. I compose myself. We would like to take the time to thank our patrons and to any of those who have taken the time to leave us a five-star rating and a review. Those reviews keep us at the top of the charts and makes it easier for more twisted souls to find the show. You can find The Grey Rooms on Spotify, iTunes, or your favorite podcatcher. And we're also now available on iHeartRadio Spreaker app. Download the iHeart Spreaker app today or open the browser and search The Grey Rooms. And we here at The Grey Rooms love our fans and want to give back to you in the best way that we know how. We have a lot of fun things to show you, and we hope that you like them. You can find out more by joining us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, and Facebook. And we took your advice and extended an olive branch to all of the tortured souls who have passed through the rooms. Our emotional support group is always looking to help you with all of your needs. And don't forget about our merch store. It's full of epic designs and logos for you to sport, showing the world that you are a survivor of these very rooms. All of this can be found in the show notes or on our website at thegrayrooms.com. And be sure to check out The Ghost Signal. If you want to hear real-life tales of terror, visit our friend, Control Operator Jeff, at thegostsignalpodcast.com. And have you checked out our Discord server? Because if you only listen to the podcast, you're only getting half the experience. Join for free to hang out with Grey Room's cast and crew. Watch movies, listen to music, play games, or learn to write your very own horror story. Our community grows daily, and you can meet and interact with like-minded fans from all over the world. And the executive bathroom has just been cleaned for our top-tier patrons. Again. And again, it's messy. Again. (sighs) We wonder sometimes. Anyway, that's the conclusion of our compilation. How fun was that, huh? And how intense did this season close out so far? We still have that finale next week. But don't think that's the end of it. Because stay tuned. Join us in our Discord. We have a lot of announcements of a lot of upcoming off-season additions and surprises. So thanks for all you have done in supporting us this season. And we hope to see you in Season 5. So till then, stay gray. And we'll see you next week. This has been a Grey Rooms production. Copyright 2022-2023. All rights reserved. Unless otherwise stated.